Good evening and welcome to part two of my uh, guide or ramble through some of my uh, wargaming and uh, accessory uh, books. Um, one book which I didn't show you earlier was, uh, this is a, a reprint which as far as I'm aware is only available in the United States of a 1929 uh, book of uh, war games rules and uh, it's it's written by two american army officers in 1929 and uh, again it's a fairly charming little book it's uh, full of these little line drawings it's obviously influenced by uh, the hg wells little wars book and a uh, simple set of rules and um, essentially a red and a blue army uh, set up on uh, a table there with Redina and Bluvia as the two uh, warring factions. Uh, as I say, it's, it's quite pleasant. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen the original uh, for sale for about £100, so I was fortunate I, I've got someone living over in the United States who was able to order it and then send it to me. But um, it's, it's once again, you know, it's... Um, it's quite a, a pleasant read, even if you don't go with the, the rules. And uh, there's different grades for progressing up through the, uh, the different levels, uh, from a, an ordinary soldier to a lieutenant, to a captain, to a major. Uh, each, each one has uh, got advanced rules. So you go through those different ranks and you, you take part in different campaigns, which... Uh, which puts you on the, the, the ladder of uh, promotion. So that's uh, Sham Battle. Um, it was only published once in 1929. And um, as I say, it's quite, a again, a charming little uh, copy. Um, the other books which I, I thought I'd show you, you're probably more familiar with these, is the Airfix magazine guides. Um, I used to collect these in themselves in the, uh, the 70s and uh, there was it ended up with quite a considerable range of books I mean I think they ended up with about uh, 30 or more titles in various aspects of uh, military modeling and war gaming and uh, one of the, the the ones which I really particularly enjoyed um, because of the way it was written these these are, these are some of my um, you know in my teens my my scrolls about uh, how I was trying to form an army, but um, the uh, there's guides here on, you know, uh, basically how to raise an army, and uh, as you see, I've been quite diligent in trying to mark off particular troop types, and um, you know, it, it was so nicely written by the uh, the well-known war games author Phil Barker, and. Um, it includes uh, a battle played with uh, airfix figures, converted, and um, it was all together again, you know, um, very nicely done, showing you the, the basic troop types available from airfix, the, the Romans and the ancient Britons, and uh, what they could be converted into. Um, I never did many conversions, to be honest. I found them hard enough work as it, it was just to uh, just to paint. Um, the other two titles available were Napoleonic and American Civil War. Uh, that's the Napoleonic one there. This, this actually did um, feature a lot of the airfix figures, of course, as were available at the time, um, and also uh, metal figures that were that were coming in at that time. Uh, the final book, as I say, American Civil War Gaming by Terence Wise, again, who I've, I've already mentioned in the earlier video. Um, he was very much a proponent of airfix figures and uh, his uh, massive, massive war games armies for this period all featured uh, airfix figures. Uh, Zouaves converted from uh, airfix French Foreign Legion. And... Um, you know, I just find, I, I mean, the pictures again, uh, sorry to hammer on about this, but uh, there's an awful lot in just looking at the pictures. Um, you know, some of the, uh, 
the pictures of the games that he was taking part in. Marvellous, uh, you know, with all the airfix figures laid out. I mean, thousands and thousands of figures. Um, it takes me on to Donald Featherston's Complete Wargaming. This has been reprinted, but this is uh, the original um, print. And this, again, was uh, an attempt to uh, acquaint people with all things wargaming. I mean, uh, it literally had, uh, you know, introductions. He already did a, a series of guides of wargame armies through, the, through history from about 3000 BC up until the present day, wargames through the ages. And, and this book, um, you know, there's some marvellous marvellous drawings uh, in here, uh, sorry, photographs in here, and, um, you know, it was actually, you know, very inspiring, it, it, he really had a wonderful way of writing. Um, towards the end of his life, he, he started selling a lot of his war game stuff off, and um, I managed to get an original picture. Sorry about that. I managed to get an original uh, print, I should say, of, uh, of one of his photographs in the book. A picture of some ethics figures set up in front of uh, in front of a castle. Um, if you can see there, that's the print which I bought, which he signed. He, he actually signed for me. And um, as I say, the book was very very instrumental in, in, in getting you into different uh, periods. It was very, very uh, exciting to, to look through and very inspiring. And, uh, you know, there, there wasn't so much in, in terms of how to paint. Uh, that came along later in, a, in another book, which uh, I have here, which, which many of you may already have, which is... Henry Hyde, who I believe was, uh, who was lately, uh, I think it was War Games, uh, Miniature War Games magazine, and this book really does go into tremendous detail. This book has got everything to do with uh, terrain, uh, how to make the figures. Um, there, there's one section here on uh, painting plastic soldiers and it, and it goes from literally opening up the box until yeah here is a section here it it takes you through the various stages of actually uh, building up a war games army cheap war games army using uh, in this instance italery Itel uh, figures and um, I've, I found this very useful this is where I got the uh, the advice to um, soak the plastic figures in uh, vinegar for a couple of days not the dark vinegar but the I think it's the spirit vinegar the clear clear one and um, that does key them up nicely it gives them a very very good paint um, surface to, to start off and uh, this book has got everything I mean I think there's some uh, there's some there's some rules in there as well but um, it's full of uh, wonderful photographs, and and again, it's um, you know, it's it's kind of like a follow up to the uh, to the Featherston book, in as much as it's it's showing you all the the whole gamut of military history, and yeah, there's a there's a set of rules in there, and um, it even it even goes to uh, the extent of giving you, uh, which was great help to me, considerable detail on horse colours. Didn't know there were so many different ones. Um, that's a very nice book. It's available in paperback now. And um, I believe he's got another book out. I don't know. It seems unavailable on Amazon. But War Games uh, Campaigns. Uh, but I, as I said, I can't get hold of that. Um, the final book I wanted to... Sh or, or one of the last few books I'd like to show you is... Uh, this book is called... The One Inch Army. Now this is only available in the United States. Again, I got it through somebody living there, and um, this is this is like a a telephone uh, book, really, in terms of uh, size. There's there's something like uh, 900 pages, and 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 what it is is um, literally every plastic model soldier 
concentrating on uh, one seventy second scale, but but not exclusively so, but mainly one seventy second scale. Uh, every manufacturer everywhere of of one uh, seventy second scale, and um, as I say, if you can get hold of it, if you can get someone in the United States to uh, to get it for you because they don't seem to import it um, directly or export it directly but um, it's it's got every manufacturer all the Russian ones even the most obscure companies um, you know it's it's it, it's all in there and um, it's really a, a very good read there, there's um, you know I mean it's just literally page after page after page of of different manufacturers some that you've you've probably never even heard of and um, even figures that were available in in cereal packets and um, you know you've got it itellery there as an example but um, you know the cut it's mainly in black and white but the colored pictures are uh, there's a center section of colored pictures uh, including the uh, the, the one I think I mentioned in another video about uh, with the, the the old American comic advert um, on the front uh, from Hat and um, yeah I mean it's a it's a beautiful book it's uh, and there's one uh, there's another one of those um, those old pictures of uh, that you that were usually found in the comics from America at the time uh, promising you. A 200 piece uh, Revolutionary War set for two dollars. I mean, I think even with postage, that would be a, a proper bargain. But um, these these are other figures available, including there, there's a set there which is um, one of the most sought after sets. Thierry Lafronde, who was uh, a French version of Robin Hood, there was a series of TV programs made by him. And the, and the French arm of Airfix produced this, uh, or, or a company produced in the style of Airfix. I'm not sure if they were um, connected with Airfix, but in an Airfix style box, a series of these figures, and um, that's that's amongst the rarest sets of plastic figures that you can uh, ever hope to get. There is a, an advertisement here uh, for for Perry's, so. Uh, you know going out of scale a little bit but uh, awful lot of stuff in there um, I mean it's just there's too much to uh, I can barely hold the thing up it's it's as I say it's nearly a thousand pages and uh, it's a very very nice book the the other books were the uh, the, the, the set of um, wargamers guides from uh, Daniel Mercy I think uh, you're probably more familiar with these. Um, they each come with a set of rules and a general kind of synopsis on uh, armies and campaigns involved. Uh, I've got the Desert War 40 to 43, Anglo Zulu War, and Early Roman Empire. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you the uh, the artwork in the uh, the Zulu War one. It's um, there's some very nice stuff here. Some very nice um, pictures there. So it's very hard to um, to hold with uh, with one hand. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's um, pretty much what uh, the central theme in each book is. Uh, is a sec section of eight or so plates and. Um, yeah, very nice actually, very nice uh, book. The final one, uh, a little bit outside the wargaming remit, but um, Airfix Little Soldiers, a French publication, uh, including one page unaccountably still left untranslated uh, for some reason. But um, this is another um, quite a beautiful book um, with, uh, with a lot of... Uh, A lot of the old original um, artwork from the the original um, Airfix figures, the very early guard sets, 
um, infantry combat group, uh, the farm animals, in fact, and uh, moving on, um, there, there are sections on other other manufacturers, but it's primarily celebration of Airfix. Um, you know, there's uh, very old uh, 1960s or 70s London street scene. Uh, look, there's a policeman there. That's very on his beat. That's very rare. And um, this book takes you through all the uh, the art, the 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 artwork including the very earliest I mean some of the very very early ones uh, Africa Corps there uh, French Foreign Legion strange to think they're still actually producing a lot of these figures now in their vintage range uh, Arabs Russian infantry Robin Hood uh, good old Robin Hood and uh, Also, um, Sheriff of Nottingham, paratroopers. We get to the First World War. These are coming in um, sort of late 60s, early 70s. And it goes right the way through the Romans with their uh, historically inaccurate chariot, apparently. Um, very nice little Royal Horse Artillery set. And um, we're getting to some of the very, very nice um, Highland infantry. And uh, the High Chaparral set, based on the uh, TV Western series of the same name, which um, is one of the rarer sets now. Uh, Astronauts, which I think uh, are reissued. Uh, then we go through slightly newer until we get up towards the end. I think the last set produced was uh, possibly NATO infantry or modern Russians. Um, then we sadly had the demise of Airfix. Um, then it mentions the, uh, the play sets, you know, the uh, Fort Sahara, I remember quite vividly um, playing with that. And uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham, or rather the Robin Hood set, Sherwood. Um, Waterloo War Game, which I, I've got somewhere, but uh, no idea where. Um, using uh, essentially some of the airfix figures and uh, as playing pieces and uh, for the, the reissues of the Fort Sahara and and similar ranges and uh, Heller the uh, the French uh, producer who uh, reissued the airfix figures also and then we go on to some of the MPC the American outlet for uh, for the figures and we, as I say, the Thierry Lafronde, the uh, the the French uh, Robin Hood, who I mentioned earlier, um, very very rare set. And um, also, yes, there was a curiously uh, hat. I'm sure did this box in the Airfix style. I didn't pick up a set at the time, and I've never seen them since. I began to think I'd dreamt it, but. It uh, they produced the Assyrian army in a in an old style airfix box briefly. Uh, they do similar things now, as I say, with the American comic advert on the front cover of some of their figures. But uh, that one I've never seen. I'd be interested in if anyone actually ever picked that set up because it looks very nice. And then we get to Airfix's uh, competitors, um, including uh, Atlantic, who were uh, you probably know a little bit wayward in their historical accuracy and um, Esky and uh, yeah it goes through a, a com complete guide to uh, as the range appeared in Airfix's uh, books and um, yeah very nice little book um, just in, in finishing just to um, thank all of you for your kind comments and encouragement um, uh, hopefully I'm doing something right. I know uh, with, with the camera work I'm still um, extremely uh, shaky. Uh, I'm, I'm all fingers and thumbs at the moment. But thank you, Fraser, for your encouragement. Uh, Bob over in uh, the US and, and, and Gavin. Thanks a lot, Gav, for your uh, words of encouragement. I, I admire your uh, videos greatly. 
You're a man that leaves no stone unturned in your uh, efforts to explore all aspects of the hobby and uh, turn your hand to uh, anything, and that's very inspirational. Uh, again, thank you, Lee Hughes. Uh, enjoy your videos, and, and Gary, of course. Wargaming with Gary. Um, I'll get a great deal from all of your videos and, and enjoy them immensely, and uh, if, you know, if my ramblings can... Uh, reciprocate a little bit at least um, I'll, I'll be be glad that's all I ask is that uh, you know you, you get a little bit of um, enjoyment out of them and uh, hopefully I'll get better at it but thanks a lot and uh, good evening